Hi folks, thanks for stopping by my channel and especially those of you who have subscribed and sent me this question. So the question I got and I'm addressing today in this video is how should I choose a dive boat or a dive operator and or a dive guide or dive master? These are the questions I would ask to determine whether I want to go dive with someone or not. So hey, my name is Ron. The ocean and its marine life have been my love and my passion since I was a child. For the past 35 years, you can find me teaching scuba diving, snorkeling, a little free diving, a little fishing on two of the southern Caribbean islands, where especially during the tourist months, you can find me leading four, sometimes five dives a day for up to two weeks in a stretch. This I've done with no dive accidents and no cases of decompression sickness to date. And I intend to keep it that way. So you want to go diving. First of all, you have to be real with yourself. Think about your ability. Just because you have a dive card doesn't mean you could dive any and everywhere. For example, if you wanted to do nice, easy shore dives, think about a destination like Bonaire, very easy diving. If you want to see the big, big life, like the sharks, the hammerheads, the manta rays, and so on and so on, you might think about the Galapagos Islands with the advanced drift dives, the currents, and so forth. So obviously, be real, think about your ability first. So once you've realistically decided on your true dive ability, then please plan to stay within your own limitations. Obviously, you cannot have a dive accident if you don't go diving. And I say this all the time to my students. And what I mean by that is when you get to the dive site, for example, you evaluate the conditions, decide whether it suits a dive and it's favorable to you or not. If you don't feel a good vibe, as we Caribbean people say, then don't dive. So the other thing I may want to ask is, do I need divers insurance when I travel? And I'm going to address that in a different video. So knowing me, I plan to go to Yohi Yoho, where I hear that diving is amazing. Lots and lots of life, hard corals, soft corals, big marine life, things like sharks, eagle rays, manta rays, and so on and so on. You get my point. Ideally, what I want to do now, unlike in the 1970s when we planned trips, is I can look up on the internet, social media, and I can find reviews and recommendations before I go. Some of the destinations even have live webcams that show you what's going on under their jetty where the boat loads and so on and so on. So you can do a lot of research up front and decide whether those conditions are good for you to go diving in and uh, basically plan your dive properly before you get out there. So the big question, of course, is how do I choose who I'm going to dive with? Do I want an operator with 20 persons on the boat, 20 divers, or do I want a smaller six-pack type operation where it's a little bit closer, a little bit more personal, and you can, you know, have a better relationship with your dive master, dive guide, who's taking you out and taking care of you. Also, what you want to consider is what are the costs? If you've got a huge boat, 20 people, 20 customers, does that mean my cost is going to be a little bit less? Will I have the freedom to dive on my own or do I have to follow the pack? Can I dive with my buddy, do the easy dives, take some pictures, spend a lot of time at one spot if I want to, and do the dive exactly as I want? These are some of the things that you might want to think about or look at. So quick story, I remember going down to the Florida Keys. We did a dive at the Key West area and we did a dive boat wreck that had the satellite dishes on them. And on that dive, the dive master gave us a very brief briefing, did not help us to gear up or do anything other than that very brief briefing and where, where's the water. And the other thing is he didn't come in the water and lead the dive. At the end of it, in a nutshell, he turned around and said, well, you guys ought to give me 18% tip. Very brazen. And um, I was out there with Russell and you know Russell, you can imagine what he had to say about that. This is a family friendly channel, so I won't repeat what he said. So this is where your pen and pencil may be handy or I'll send you some notes about these questions after. Some of the things that you may want to consider related to your costs and your trip might include the following. One, how many dives do we plan to do? Where are we going to meet? What time do we go out and what time do we come in? Do I get a sense that it's being rushed? How long are my surface intervals? While I am on my surface interval, is the boat bobbing and weaving and getting me seasick out at sea? When I do my trips, sometimes I'll actually come back into the jetty so that the divers are not seasick and unable to make that second or third dive. 
That's a factor that may be very important to you. You're not going to enjoy your dive if you're totally seasick. Will a dive guide lead you or do we self-navigate the dive site? Is there an emergency response plan? That's a plan to deal with any problems or emergencies that might arise on your dive trip. What about the medical kit? Is there one? Also, is there an oxygen kit available? Anybody doing diving and leading a tour or group being paid to do that must have an oxygen kit and a first aid kit and an emergency response plan. To me, that's very important. You may also want to find out now about the air. Does the dive trip include, and the prices include air fills, tank rentals, weight belts? How about the gear? What's the pricing for the gear? Is there a meal provided on the trip? And what about water and sodas? Is that available to you? Are there bathroom facilities on the boat? What sort of water entries are we going to be doing? Shall we do the giant stride? Are we doing the seated back roll? Ideally, you may want to choose something that you're comfortable with, of course. What's the cancellation policy up until you're ready to go diving? And what about on the day? What happens if the conditions are not good and you have to cancel? What are the cancellation policies? Do you pay up front or do you pay at the end of your dive trip for the number of dives you've done and so forth? Are tips and gratuities expected? Maybe you can research on the internet and find out if yes or no at that area and roughly how much it might be. Who do you tip? The boat captain, the dive master and crew and or if anyone else is there available. The other thing you may want to ask is, I know this one is kind of obscure, but is there spare fishing going on? We tend to do a little bit of lionfish culling every time we dive now. That's a pole spare and it's not dangerous to you as such. However, if it is that somebody's out there and they're spearfishing on the trip with you, you may want to consider whether you're comfortable with that. You can be taking a picture here, all of a sudden you see a spear whizzing by shooting the fish that you're taking a picture of. Decide whether that's going to be suitable to you. Lots of questions, lots of information to find out there, but of course it's useful and that avoids any surprises when you get there and you are on a dive trip. Folks, I remember looking at a dive facility and the way they operated, the divers would gear up at the dive shop and then walk down a little incline onto a beach area like this and have to walk out to the ocean. And as you can see with the ocean here, I was just like that there. The boat could come up to the shoreline and of course with the waves, the boat would be rising and falling, rising and falling. Even some of the small divers would be almost falling in the sand as they walked down. And when they got there now, the boat was rising and falling with the water. And I saw it almost landed on one or two feet. And the divers could have been very seriously injured. Is that what you want for you and your loved ones and your buddies? Think about where you're going diving. If I'm doing a dive like that, come on. The least you can do is hire somebody locally to at least carry the tanks for the divers. We're paying for fun and enjoyment, not for unsafe activities. Now let's talk a little bit about the dive boat, the dive facility and the operator. I've always been appreciative of the questions. I think an informed customer is my better customer. And so questions are always welcome, especially the meaningful ones, <laughs> sorry. Usually, I send full detail and info about the dives and the planning, just like I do for my dive students looking to start a dive class. And I follow that up with a area orientation, a dive briefing, and then a specific safety briefing. Usually the evening before our dive trips, or at least on the morning of the trip. So I remember once hearing a dive operator saying, we do not need an emergency response plan because we've never had a dive accident. Really? Is that the kind of operator you want to go diving with? Think about these things, folks. So something that's not spoken of very often in these planning decisions and so forth might be a little discussion about the boat, the engines and the gasoline on that boat. Engines are mechanical devices and they can and they do break down. If I dive in the USA, for example, there's a very good chance that there's a working 
VHF radio on board, able to communicate with the Coast Guard in the event that you need help. Where I am located, for example, way down in the Southern Caribbean where I operate a dive shop, chances are help might not be as readily available and able to get to me or us in the event of emergency. So my boat always has two engines, we carry a full tank of gas and we carry an extra gasoline cylinder under the back seat, just in case of an emergency, one never knows. We also carry a VHF radio, we stand by on channel 16 and or sometimes channel 72. If we're using, for example, the GPS Nautilus Lifeline units. And I'm talking about that in a different video. So I'm going to tell you a quick story again about London Bridge. I was doing an advanced training dive. I was in the Bay of Charlottesville and we had divers down. They were doing their navigation patterns. So I was on the boat looking at the bubbles, doing squares and triangles and so forth. And my captain got a call from another dive boat indicating they had just broken down. So in other words, the engine was running and we ascertained that the boat just shut off. The operator indicated that the starter had gone bad. And I said, well, that can't be the starter. If they were operating, then it means that they've run out of gas. Sure enough, that was the problem. Could you imagine if the dive operator had divers in the water and the dive boat ran out of gas before they were able to pick up all the divers? They'd be drifting and floating away. That's really nonsense. That's the height of slackness. And that's why it's important for you to find out about that sort of thing up front. It might sound like, oh, that's fairly common sense. Of course they have gas. No. All boats, of course, should have a working VHF radio. And this is usually mentioned in the briefing that happens before you go out to dive. I have a backup VHF radio in my backpack and that goes with me because I'm on the water a lot. It goes with me basically everywhere. That and my Nautilus Lifeline GPS unit is with me at all times in my backpack. There should also be a captain on board the boat following the diver's flag, floats, bubbles, however they may choose to do their dive. And that might be the subject of a different video. Usually there's a dive flag hoisted from the highest point on the dive vessel and or the dive master may also carry one and use it while you're diving. The dive flag might be the red and white diver down flag, that's a recreational dive flag, or the blue and white flag, which is the alpha flag, which is flown especially when you're a little bit more offshore or you're doing commercial work on a vessel. And that indicates boats want to stay a distance of 100 to 300 feet away from you and not put the diver in and divers in danger as they age. Another item you may want to consider for your personal safety would be a SMB or the submersible float system that would allow you to inflate what we call a safety sausage and have it sticking up in the air. That is going to allow you to be able to tell to the dive captain, I'm over here, I'm surfacing under this float. And so I sometimes carry a reel with mine. You want to find out from the dive operator if they rent that, if they have it attached to their BC as standard or not. So last but not least, your dive master should offer a thorough speak and talk with you before you go diving. And that should include very important information such as the safety information. Where's the medical kit? Where's the oxygen kit? Where's your emergency response plan? And so on and so on. They should offer a area orientation. An area orientation will tell you about the bottom composition, the currents, the marine life that you might expect to see, what you may want to stay away from, not touch. And also, of course, a dive briefing. How deep you're going, how long you're staying, who's your buddy, blah, blah, blah. That sort of information. So, folks, that covers some of the most important points for me in deciding whether I'm going to choose this dive operator or that one. This facility, this dive guide, this dive master. These are important factors that go into your planning and your consideration for who you're going to dive with. So folks, if you found any of the information on this video useful, helpful, beneficial in any way, please consider my three S's. One is to share this video with your friends, your dive buddies, anyone who may benefit from it also, it's free. 
Two, subscribe. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more content related to diving, safety, and so forth, do subscribe and that'll get you in the know of whenever I post videos. Usually I post on a Tuesday or Monday. And uh, thirdly, please do send me a message. Send me a message because I enjoy doing the videos and your messages, your feedback, gives me the motivation to get out here and do more videos for you. Please do stay well, be safe, and enjoy your diving. I'll see you on the next video. Take care now.